watch their young QB and kind of his progression through the season? What, what sort of sticks out about him? Yeah, I think he's, uh, <clears throat> you know, early in the year, obviously, he looked. He looked like he wasn't quite what he is now. He's made it. He's done a really good job developing throughout the year. He looks like he has command of the offense now. Uh, shoot, he's got a big arm. He can make all the throws. He's got good wide receivers that get open for him. Uh, I think he does a good job with his reads, and he does a good job, you know, scrambling or getting rid of the football when he gets pressure and there's nowhere to go with it. How do you think uh, Miles did in his first game against everybody's first game this season? How, how, how do you stack up when you watch him back? Yeah, Miles. I mean, I think. You know, every game, every player would probably tell you there's a, a few plays they wish they could have back. There's a few that he wishes he could have back. But for the most part, <coughs> Miles stepped in there and did a really good job, uh, played sound defense. Uh, you know, his first start, obviously, had a couple picks. And, uh, you know, he didn't have a, a splash play necessarily in the last game. But a lot of times when a, a brand new starter gets injected into the game, if there's not a lot of, uh, you know, if you don't notice him a whole bunch, that's probably a good thing. And Miles did his job for the most part and played a really good football game. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I, I, I thought David Bell was, uh, I still do. I think he's, you know, one of the best receivers in the country and in our conference. And, you know, I think he, you know, I can't remember, held him to whatever we held him to. But I think those guys did a good job of limiting a really good receiver to well under what he normally gets in a football game. And, uh, you know, also they're, they're an offense that's lived off explosive plays for the last five years. And uh, I think there was one in, in the game, and that was a 21-yard 21 yard throw, so I think the guys did a really good job of limiting big plays um, and you know keeping uh, David Bell you know under what he normally gets. What are a few, I guess, bullet point items that you, you want to see improve or be better these last few games in the finish line? Uh, I think we need to call some more turnovers. Um, you know, we've gotten some picks, which is good. We need to call some more forced fumbles. Uh, we need to sack the quarterback a little bit more. Um, you know, and then. I just think that you know, right now we're constantly every game you're hovering around. To me, that like 33% on the fourth on the third down percentage is kind of when you look back statistically over college football and stats or stats or whatever. That 33% kind of gets you into that top group. And you know, like last game, we were 35.7 or something like that. So get off the field one more time or two more times on third down, and that make a, makes a huge difference in the football game. So I think those are the areas you want to you want to see continue to improve. <laughs> well, they got a really big offensive line that's really good. Um, they got a, a good young running back. Obviously, you know, at the beginning of the year. With him, he's done a nice job developing too. He was hitting everything with speed, and it was kind of that's where I'm supposed to go. I'm going to hit that thing. Now he's really been able to read what they're trying to do. He's put his foot in the ground. He's cutting it back. So I think that he's got a really good feel for what they're trying to do in the run game now. How helpful is it for you guys to have, have you know, seen Ohio State for a number of years now? This is a, isn't an offense that you're preparing for kind of out of the blue. Does that help at all having seen? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, you know, Coach Day does a good job, and, and their coordinators, I mean, they're always going to change things. They're going to tweak things. They do a great job formationally with motions to try to hide some of those indicators um, that you have in the run in the pass game. But, I, you know, obviously when you play against guys, um, you know, you have a feel for them, and the receivers are, you know, back, and some of the O-linemen, the starters are back, and you got to have a feel for those guys and just kind of what it feels like to play a, a team of that caliber. So I think it probably helps some. Yeah, like I, I told you guys at the beginning of the year, I still believe it. Um, we're playing really good defense. We have a really good culture in that room. Um, we have really good people in that room. Those kids are, you know, they're, they're football players. They love the game. They love being around each other. They know what we're trying to do. They want to come to work. They want to play for each other. They want to play for the fans. They want to play for Nebraska. I just, I just love the culture that we have in that room, and these kids are – they're not going to do anything differently. They're not going to. They're not going to say the woe is me. Well, we lost a couple games. They don't care. Right back to work. Let's play again. Just because they love to be out there, they love to play this game, and they want to continue to develop. You know, they they started off last year with getting to be a, a good a good group, a good defense, and they've continually progressed. Obviously, some weeks they've played 
you know, exceptional football. Some weeks they haven't played quite up to their standard, I would say. But they want to they wanna continue to, to progress. The young guys, the old guys, the old guys want to leave it all out there for Nebraska. The young guys want to continue to develop and, and be really good in the years to come. But I just like the group we have on defense, and I, I, I'm thankful for them, and I commend them for their, their attitude and their, their, their workmanlike uh, approach that week to week. Yeah, I think probably, I don't know, I mean, early, early, you know, it was a probably new system on defense, you know, new players, all that kind of thing, and you're walking into a, a, a team that's really good talent, really well developed, um, been in the system for a while, uh, but whatever that gap is, it's shrinking, shrinking very, very quickly. Um, you know, we just got to continue, and, and obviously, we got to continue to develop players, continue to recruit players. Uh, but I think, you know, here developing players is as important as anything. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good good players within this this 500-mile radius, and some of those guys play basketball, and then they go play football, and then they go play track, and then they go play baseball, and they don't lift weights as, as much as some of these guys that play football all year round in some other states. And those guys come to us like a, like a Luke Reimer and a Nick Henrich and a Garrett Nelson. They come to us, and it you have to develop those guys and you have to get them in the program and develop them and that's I think is what's happening here you know on the on the defensive side of the ball you see all those guys that are the Ben Stillies you know like we already said Garrett uh, you know Jojo and, and Isaac Gifford and Reimer and Nick Henrich and those guys are going to continue to have to be in this program those are what this program is built on and those guys got to continue to develop so that's how you that's how you close the gap. Yeah, I think all the player, all the teams you mentioned, it's really hard to take away uh, what really good players do. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, you, you you have to you have to try to make them adjust a little bit um, every week. You have to try to take away what they do best. You're not going to be able to. Obviously, you can't if if it's a team that like this team that runs the ball really good and they throw the ball really good. You're probably not going to be able to take away everything on every down, right? But my job is I gotta I gotta be prepared for what I think they're going to do, what they've shown they're going to do, try to take it away in those situations. And then uh, the rest of the time, the, the guys got to play rules football. They got to do their job. And, and they've done really good at that this year. And you know, sometimes you know, in coverage, we all know we're not crazy in coverage. There's always a hole in the coverage, right? No matter what coverage you run, uh, unless you're playing man every snap. And the, the kids know that. They know if, you know, if, if they throw a, you know, a 10-yard outcut versus certain coverage, they're going to get it. We tackle it. We move on. And then I get better call different coverage. Um, but there's, there's certain things you can take away, and there's certain things you can't. But this team's really good at, at running the football and throwing the football. So it'll be a great challenge for us. Yeah, usually, um, usually I like to have those conversations after the season. Um, to me, those conversations don't help midseason. Um, it doesn't help the young man. It doesn't help me. Uh, I, I don't want that young man thinking about those types of things while he's preparing for Ohio State or whoever he needs to prepare for. So usually those conversations happen um, after the fact, and then we'll have an honest and open conversation. And um, I always want to do right by the young man and his family first, and then We'll, we'll talk through the situation after that. Miles has played quite a bit, maybe you've already asked about Miles, but he's played quite a bit. How much does it help then to have a full game, sort of all the, all the wrinkles and everything you see over the course of 85 snaps to go through with him and help him get ready for you know, what he's going to see? Yeah, I think being in the game flow definitely helps. Um, I don't think any of us had a doubt that Miles was going to go in there and operate. Uh, like we said, guys go in first time starter. Everybody makes a mistake in every game. Uh, he probably made a few, right? But he operated pretty well. He'd done a good job. Um, but having a game under your belt definitely helps. And just operating with the other guys on the field, um, operating from sideline to huddle, it's a little different than in practice. Um, and obviously, operating under the big lights and in front of 100,000 fans is, is, a, is a pretty cool deal. But it's also uh, not something that you're used to. So I think having a game under his belt will be very helpful for him.
Yeah, no, Braxton, Braxton deserves to play some. Uh, he's done really well in practice. Um, Braxton's really good in, in coverage. Uh, and he deserves to get in there a little bit, and we can rotate some of those guys through. And obviously, you're getting towards the end of the season where guys have played a lot of reps, and you want to start rolling some guys through, especially if there's been some long series or guys getting tired or, or things like that. So Braxton deserves to play some, some football. All good? All right. Thanks, guys.